Welcome to MacroCode. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and welcome on board to this amazing journey of learning more about .NET and ASP.NET Core, .NET MAUI and Zamari Informs. So today we are going to learn about ASP.NET Core Automapper, uh, which helps us to easily convert one object to another. So as you all know, mapping code is boring. So testing mapping code is even more boring. So Automapper is a simple library built to, to map one object to another object, and it actually takes all uh, of the works. So when we say Automapper is an object to object mapper that works by transforming one input object of one type into another out output object of another type. So today we are going to demonstrate this using uh, SP.NET Core Web API. So to start with, we'll create a project create new project, then we are going to use sp.net core web API. Then we can call this simple automapper. Then next, so our project will create. So we have our project here. So our project, we have the weather forecast uh, model. We have the program.cs uh, file, we have settings file where we, you, you can actually configure uh, database connection. Then we have the weather forecast dot. That is the weather forecast controller. So this is a simple web API. So if we launch it, you'll be able to see that it is just a simple web API that returns weather forecast uh, data. So you can see this is uh, the weather forecast and we can try out, if you execute, you'll be able to see the data. So we are using uh, controllers in our web API. So if you if you want to use minimal APIs, uh, guys, we did a video about minimal APIs and you can co consider watching and even liking our video. So we'll post our the description down below so that you're able to uh, reference it. So for today's video, we are going to majorly, majorly based on uh, Automapper. So we are going to install uh, Automapper nuggets. So we'll begin with that. So click on uh, the project, then manage a nuggets. So we'll be able to install. So we'll search for Automapper. Then we'll need to install this Automapper then we need something also called uh, automapper extension for sp.net core so you see this you need to install that as well so if you click it that is it so we have installed automapper uh, packages we have the automapper and the extension for uh, sp.net core so what we need to do we can create another folder called view models. So we are going to create a view model. So we create a view model, we call it weather forecast view model. Weather forecast, weather forecast view model. So we create that. So we'll copy all the properties on our model, the weather forecast model to our, to our weather forecast view model. Then we will change something small here. So you can have this, that is it. So the next thing that we need to do is to create, so we need to tell the automapper that we want to map one type of an object to another type, and also to be able to reverse the, the mapping. So we can create uh, one of the models that is a class. So we can create a folder then name these models. So in this folder, we can create a class called mapping file. Mapping profile, we can call it mapping profile. Then inside this mapping profile, we can actually create our constructor mapping profile that is it then inside our constructor we can now create the map create 
map. So it is not, it will be able to see that. Just let, so if we hover here, we'll be able to see that we need to, we need to import something. So at the top of our namespace, we can say using auto mapper. So if you do that, you'll be able to see that we can do create map. Then before that, we had forgotten something here, we need to do profile. So just do here profile. Then we are able to see that this one will work. So then we can do now weather forecast. This is the mapping that we need to do, weather forecast, weather forecast view model. And you want these two actually have, so we can do reverse. So we can, we can do reverse map as well. So since, so that is, so we have actually tell the automapper that you want to map one type of an object, this object either to this, and we can also do a reverse map, either from weather focus to uh, this one. So the next thing that we need to do, we now, we need to tell, uh, we need to uh, tell SP.NET that, uh, about the mapping that we, we, we want to do and add the automapper in dependency in injection so that anytime we request an iMapper, it will give us an automapper instance. So what we need to do, come to program.cs, then here we will do, we will do, so let me just uh, do that. So we'll do builder.services.add auto auto mapper, you can see it here. Then we need to, so we need to do something called type of, type of, then type of, then here we can pass our mapping file, mapping profile. So you can see, we need to close this. So we have actually tell, uh, we have actually now added it to SP.NET Core. So the next thing that we need to do when we come to our weather controller, uh, we need to update our weather forecast to return the view model instead of the concrete class. So you can see the view model here is actually returning the concrete class, th this class that uh, it came with it with the with the web api but we want it now to return our view model you can see our view model is weather forecast view model which it has the same same fields as the weather forecast so on our controller we will change this so what we need to do first we need to add an a mapper variable and write it and wire it up in the construct in the constructor so what we need to do come at the top here, then you can say private read only, then imapper, imapper, so imapper, then you can call this uh, mapper, so you can do this, then on our constructor, we need to wire it up. So what we'll need to do, we'll do that. Then we say imapper, imapper, then mapper. Then here we'll do mapper is equals to mapper. So after we have done, they can close this. So we'll minimize this a bit. So after we have done that, we need to update the get method to return the view model and use automapper to convert the weather forecast uh, model to weather forecast view model. So the next thing that we need to do is to change this to weather forecast view model. Then here, when you are returning this, we need to, you can see this is the, uh, data so you can you can say 
let's just let's just do away with this we say variable can declare a variable here then we say weather forecast is equals to enumerable dot range then we'll do one five then we say dot select then we'll do that we say index we do that then we say the new so weather forecast so remember that the weather forecast is the one that has the data so we'll do that then we say date time because the date time time dot now dot add days so we'll do that index so we can do this to do this then here we need to do that then you can say temperature is equals to random dot shared dot next then you say 30 20 50 five then here you can say summary summary we'll do this summary equals to summaries summaries and say random shared next and summaries length so all these we need it we need it to list as a list so you can do it to list there's something wrong happening here with the forecast CS class, we will do that. Then we will say date time dot now dot add days. So it say index. It is saying cannot come date time only. So we need to confirm our model is it date date only that's fine so we can do date so on others it is date only so that is fine so we'll do this uh on our controller we can say date date only dot dot add mm, we can do date only Or we can let's do this simply we can just do this then we can update our weather forecast to date time date time then we can update these uh, our view model to date time so on our weather forecast you can see this is now date time so now that is fine then we can have this to list so this is our our method now so we need to return something so we need to return this is where now auto mapper comes in so we return the mapper dot map list so we need to map the lists list to weather forecast so we need to map it back to this one because all this is in we have used you can see we have used weather forecast but our return we want the data to be 
map to the weather forecast view model. So we do that, then we pass our, our weather forecast here. Then you close it. So when we run the weather forecast get method, you'll be able to see that it returns the, the weather forecast view model and that the automapper does all the mapping work for us and even ignores the fact that there is no summary property in the view model. So you can see this uh, weather forecast view model here. So if we want to, if we can now launch our application, so you can see we have now mapped all the, the this object to weather forecast view model. So if we run this, So you can see we have this. If we try it, execute, you can see we have the data. So we have actually used Automapper to map that. So one thing that you need to know, uh, Automapper has configured this to work as expected. And it will only do that if the input and output objects have the same property names and the mapping configuration is correct. So that is what you need uh, to understand about Automapper. So you can see in case now, uh, I don't want to touch this code and uh, I want to only limit some data that comes to my API. So if I command these two lines in our view model, so, and we run our code, you can see we are not having any errors so far. So commenting this doesn't affect our code. So you can see it has run but it, has, it is now limited to only these two fields. So if we try this, we'll get data as well. So you can see we have the data. So you can actually, in case you don't want to touch the concrete class, you see this concrete class, it has the, so if we comment actually this one, then we'll be able to get an issue with our API, you see? So if we uncomment it, that is fine. So this also works the same way as you may want it in uh, retrieving data from a database and you don't want to show all the fields. So you can only use the view model, then use that view model to map certain fields that you'll want to be available to your users. So that is the importance of using this uh, automapper. So thank you guys for watching. In case you have any uh, comment about uh, automapper, Comment down below so that you are able to learn more and remember to subscribe and see you in our next videos.